Good morning, everyone. This is Lilita Madison. I am joining you from Southwest Michigan, and I am so happy to be back with you today to talk about hot or cold, taking control of your stress. Before we go ahead and talk about our topic today, which is going to be two really important words, autogenics and biofeedback, I'm going to invite us to start our time together with a practice of soft belly breathing, okay? So everyone, put whatever you're holding in your hands, look around the room, grab a chair or sit on your bed or your sofa or even the floor, make your body comfortable. And let's take a moment to close our eyes if that feels comfortable. Otherwise you can just gently gaze down towards the floor. And let's begin to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you take in your breath and as you exhale, Bring your attention to the fact that your breath is traveling all the way to the bottom of your lungs. And as you breathe in on that next inhalation, you can silently say the word soft. And as you breathe out, Think the word belly. And then when you're ready, make sure you feel the earth underneath your feet and start noticing whatever surface you're sitting on. You might even gently wiggle your fingers or your toes and then gently open your eyes. Mm. Thank you for practicing with me. I am in this moment noticing how good that made my body feel. So I'm ready for today's lesson and I'm excited to learn with you today. So friends, I'm going to start this lesson on autogenics and biofeedback with a riddle. So. Go ahead and look at the letters on your screen. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want you to see if you can guess the word that we might be starting with today. I'm gonna to give you a hint. The solution to this riddle, it is a word, something that happens to each one of us. And sometimes when we're worried, uh, could happen, let's say if you know that there is a math test coming up tomorrow morning, and let's say you did a little bit of studying, but you all of a sudden start taking the test and you notice, oh, maybe I should have studied a little bit longer. The solution to this riddle, I'm going to give you one last hint, is something that could happen. Let's say if someone in your class is having a birthday party and you're not yet sure if you're going to receive an invitation, but you're thinking about it and maybe you're noticing mm, some tightness in your shoulders or maybe even a little knot in your stomach. Anyone got it? Well, I'll give you the solution to the riddle, stress. So stress is something that all of us experience and that's going to be part of our conversation today and part of what we're going to learn about how our own bodies experience stress. Because just like everyone's different with a different personality and maybe a different hair color and eye color and skin color, same thing with stress. Stress shows up in different ways for each one of our bodies. So before we talk more about that, I'm gonna ask for you to take a moment and think about what do you notice in your own body when you're stressed? 
So I already gave two examples about some tightness in your muscles or maybe some butterflies in your stomach. But what else do you notice happens? So just take a moment. You could even say the answer out loud. Or if you like to draw or write, you can take a whiteboard or a piece of paper and just jot down a thought that you have. So as we start learning about stress and before we have this new mind-body skill that we practice today, I wanted to take a moment to talk about our brain. Now, I'm gonna kind of tell you something that I learned that I wish I had learned when I was your age. And if you look very, very closely, you, you're gonna see two images in this picture. You're going to see a human with a brain with all sorts of connections. And then you're going to see an animal as well. That's right, a dinosaur. And some of you might already be wondering, what on earth is this dinosaur doing in this picture? Well, it's a very good question. So let's start with something that is very interesting to know. And that is that we actually, friends, have two brains. We have our thinking brain, the one that you see with all these colors and connections. And our thinking brain helps us when we're in school. Our thinking brain helps us learn and talk and remember all the information that we need if we're giving a presentation or taking a quiz, okay? The dinosaur brain is a second brain that we have in our body and it's located right back here in the back of our heads. And the job of the dinosaur brain is to keep us safe. Now, the important thing to know about the dinosaur brain is that it's very, very old. So part of its job in keeping us safe is to let our body know when we see or feel something happening in our environment that might feel a little bit stressful or might even look a little bit dangerous, okay? So pause and just park that information about your dinosaur brain in the back because we're going to come back to it in a moment. Now, now that we know that we have these two brains, I wanna go back to this thinking brain, that part we use for school and for learning and for reading and for writing. Did you know that you and I and all humans have an almond-like part in your brain? I know, how cool is that? Now, it's not a real almond, it's in the shape of an almond and it's something unique called an amygdala. And there it is highlighted on your screen. You could see it from one end and the other. And some of you might be thinking, amygdala, huh? What on earth could that be? And how and why is it important to this conversation about stress? Well, the word amygdala, and try to say it three times fast, is a word that means almond in the Latin language. And what this word is, it is the alarm center in our brain. So that's why I put this picture of an alarm so that we can remember alarm, amygdala, almond. All three of those words start with the letter A, okay? And the amygdala, this almond-shaped alarm in our brains is so important because what it does is it all of a sudden goes off when our eyes or our ears or even our skin feels that we are in danger, okay? But here's what's really interesting, friends. Our thinking brain and our amygdala, they don't even, they don't always know if that danger, what we're seeing or hearing or feeling, if it's real or if it's imagined. So here I have on the top of our screen, a image of a snake. And this particular snake happens to be poisonous. So of course, if we go on a hike in the desert and we see a snake even from afar, our bodies, that amygdala is going to go off and we're going to have a reaction in our bodies, okay? So our heart might start beating fast, we might get sweaty palms, our eyes might dilate, which is a fancy way of saying our, our pupils, that black part of our eyes get bigger, right? So that's something that real that happens. That is a real example of stress. 
But here is what's really, really interesting about our brains. We could also think about something that's stressful. So here you see in the bottom right hand corner, a math equation. Boy, I noticed that when I take a moment to look at it, mm, my, my palms get a little bit warmer and my heart is beating because when I look at that image, I don't quite understand what it means. So am I taking a real math test right now? No, but just the thought of sitting down and taking an exam or a quiz, that's something in my imagination, but it's still sending off that alarm in my brain and in my body. And so what happens is when that alarm goes off, there are three Fs, three different options of what can happen. So our body could feel like it needs to fight, okay? The second thing that could happen in our bodies is that we all of a sudden run, flight, as fast as we can, right? We use our arms and our legs and we pump and we run away. And the third thing that could happen when that alarm goes off is we freeze. And this is all of these three options and our, all of our bodies are different, just like we talked about earlier. So we're gonna have to take a moment a little bit later to think about what happens for your own body. But one of these things will happen when that alarm goes off. So let me take us back to a moment of reflection and thinking, huh, what are all the different things that, what are all the different changes that happen in your body when you're stressed? So we already talked about the heart, the heart could speed up or race, okay? We talked about the palms that can feel sweaty, those muscles becoming tense, and that could be all over. It could be in your head, maybe getting a headache. It could be those muscles getting really tight in your shoulders and your neck, or even in the bottom of your back or your stomach, okay? We discussed those eyes getting bigger so we can see if there's any danger coming. And another change that can happen and if you are experiencing stress is that your blood pressure can increase. So here we are at our second stoplight. So if you are that drawer or writer, grab that whiteboard or piece of paper again. Otherwise, you can just sit and take a moment to think and maybe say out loud, when you feel stressed or scared, does your body fight, flee, or freeze? So does it feel like it wants to yell or scream? Does it feel like it wants to run away and get as far away as possible? Or does it feel frozen and like it doesn't know what to do? Now, now that we've talked a little bit about stress and we've reflected a little bit about all the changes that can happen in our bodies, I wanted to introduce to you today's tool. Now, some of you might already notice that autogenic training, the word autogenic has a, has a word hidden inside, auto, okay? And what this series of phrases is going to be this exercise, it's going to be us focusing on our body, on our arms and our legs and our heartbeat and our forehead and what I'm going to invite you to do in the practice is get into that comfortable position and you already know how to do that because I know you've practiced your soft belly breathing, right? So making sure that your feet are flat on the floor somewhere, that your spine is straight, okay? And if you want, you can close your eyes. And for this mind-body skill, once we start, and we're not quite yet going to do that, I'll give you a cue and I'll, I'll give you the green light of when. I'm going to invite you to cross check your feet, your spine, your eyes, and then all you need to do is listen to my voice. And what I'll be doing is I'll be going through a series of phrases. And as you hear me direct you to that part of your body. So maybe it's focusing on your hands, 
your arms being heavy and warm, or maybe it's bringing your attention to that heartbeat being calm and strong. I'm gonna invite you to put all of your focus and imagination on that part of your body. And then just notice. So this is a little bit like an experiment, okay? That's what we're doing with all of these different practices. We're going to see how we feel before. We're going to notice what happens during the exercise and then also what happens after. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that all of you already know, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And that is that there is no wrong way to do this exercise. So let's pretend that you have that checklist, your feet are in the right place, your spine is straight, your eyes, you've chosen your eyes to be closed. And let's say you start practicing the exercise and midway through you notice oh, you've dozed off. I'll let you know something that happens sometimes. So if it happens for you today, okay. That's something that you can bring back and share. Well, maybe there is an adult in your family that you can also invite to do this exercise with, okay? Or maybe you have a sibling or even a pet that you want to bring in and say, hey, would you like to practice this thing called autogenic training today? And you can do it along with them, okay? So before we start, just remember that all you have to do, your job is to notice how you feel right now, before, what your experience is like during the exercise, and then how you feel after. Because what we're doing is we're collecting information. So I'm going to show you the different sentences that I'm going to use. I'll be saying, again, once we get to that point of having the experience, you'll be hearing me say, my arms are heavy and warm. My legs are heavy and warm. My heartbeat is calm and strong. My breathing is calm and relaxed. My abdomen radiates warmth and my forehead is pleasantly cool. Mm. And you'll also hear me repeat them each sentence a few times. Now, here's a little trick. For you to get to that deepest place of calm and relaxation, I'm going to ask you to, when I say the phrase out loud, for you to repeat it silently in your head, okay? So you don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to write it down. You just have to think it quietly inside your mind. Now, I have a surprise for you. Are you ready for a surprise? This exercise has a second part to it. And the second part is a way that we are going to use science to get information about what's happening for our body. Remember, a few slides ago, we talked about stress and we talked about all the changes that happen in our body when we feel worried or scared or stressed, okay? So the second part, the surprise that I have for you using science is something called biofeedback. And as you look at the screen, I want you to also notice that hidden word inside the word biofeedback. You got it, bio. You might already know some words that have that three letter hidden word in it, like biology. So some of you might be thinking, well, Lilita, what on earth is biofeedback and how are we gonna use it? And how is this a surprise? Well, those are all really good questions, friends. So I'm going to get right to it and let you know what this is. Biofeedback is a way where we can get some data, some information about temperature changes in our body. Okay. So using biofeedback, we are going to use some objects to see Mm, if they can tell us if our body is getting huh, warmer, I was going to say hotter, but it's really getting warmer, okay? Unless you're sitting outside in the hot sun, then maybe your body will get hot. But really, if you're sitting inside and practicing this mind-body skill, your body might get a little bit warmer. 
Otherwise, you're also going to notice with this biofeedback, this object that we're going to practice with, does your temperature stay the same? Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it gets a little bit cooler. So this is part of what we're going to notice as well. Remember before I said you're going to notice and pay attention to what happens before, during, and after the activity. Same thing with the biofeedback. You're just going to see. Now, I know I can't see inside your home, but I just want you to say with biofeedback, no peeking. So when we do the autogenic training, I don't want to see any eyes open to peek to see if they're if you can notice a change. So here we have a mood ring. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a mood ring before. Or if you haven't, ask your parents, do they know what a mood ring is? Okay. A mood ring is a special type of ring that you can put on one of your fingers. And what happens is the color changes based on your mood. Now, some of you might be thinking, what? Are you telling me that if I get a little bit happier or if I'm excited about something, the color of my, my ring will change? Or if I'm all of a sudden feeling frustrated or annoyed because my brother or sister came into my room and took something without asking, that's going to change too? You betcha. And the way that that happens is the mood ring measures the change in your body temperature. And each mood ring comes with a color card. So here's the key to the color card. So let's say that you happen to have a mood ring with you in your toolbox. If you put it on, if you take a minute to notice the color, it might take a minute or two until it lands. Huh, you can use this key to cross check. Wow, where am I? Am I feeling relaxed? Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling calm? So let's go back to the third and final stoplight. When your body's alarm system goes off, what can you do to help it turn off? Well, I believe that already you have a couple of tools. So I know that you have the soft belly breathing tool. There might be some other practices that you already know that make your body feel calm and relaxed if something stressful happens. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna add that next tool to your toolbox, that tool for autogenic training. So that if you notice that amygdala, that almond-shaped alarm system going off, if you see something stressful, hear something stressful, feel something stressful, or maybe even if you think about it, if it's in your imagination, you'll have something else to add to help your body come back to balance, okay? Let's take a pause. And before we sink in, let's take two soft and gentle belly breaths. Nicely done. And now what I'll do is I will invite you to go ahead and find that comfortable place, wherever it might be. And as you find that comfortable place, remember that checklist, take a moment to check that your feet are flat on the floor and that your spine is straight. And if you'd like, Gently close your eyes. And as you listen to my voice, start noticing what's happening in your body. My arms are heavy and warm. My arms are heavy and warm. My arms 
are heavy and warm. My legs are heavy and warm. My legs are heavy and warm. My legs are heavy and warm. My heartbeat is calm and strong. My heartbeat is calm and strong. My heartbeat is calm and strong. My breathing is calm and relaxed. My breathing is calm and relaxed. My breathing is calm and relaxed. My abdomen radiates warmth. My abdomen radiates warmth. My abdomen radiates warmth. My forehead is pleasantly cool. My forehead is pleasantly cool. My forehead is pleasantly cool. And go ahead and take maybe one or two more soft belly breaths. Take a minute to notice and scan how your body's doing in this moment. And when you're ready, you can just gently start bringing yourself back, maybe with some wiggles or stretches. Just come back when you're ready. Yeah, good work. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and check your ring. If you forgot to put your ring on as we were talking about it, it's okay. I forgot this time too, no problem. Just go back and notice right now, how do your muscles feel? 
Mm. How does your heart feel? Do you notice anything about your mood? And you can go ahead and write it down, take a few notes, maybe even draw a picture if you're an artist. Or if you'd like to speak it out loud, just say it. I feel fill in the blank. Or I notice fill in the blank. So one last thing that I wanted us to come back to for home practice. And home practice is a little bit different, friends, than homework. Home practice is really an invitation for us to keep learning about ourselves as we learn about these mind-body tools. So here are six questions that you can come back to. You don't have to do them all at one time, but they're really reminders of things that we want to make sure that our thinking brain learns, okay? So the first question, when do you experience stress? I invite you to think about that. Question number two, what changes in your body when you notice that you're stressed? Number three, remember that dinosaur brain? What is the dinosaur brain's job? I'll give you a little hint. It has something to do with making sure that our bodies are safe. Question four. What type of nut does the amygdala look like? Question five, do you need a four digit passcode to shut off your body's alarm system? That's a yes or no question, by the way. And question six, what can you do to help your body calm down and return to balance? So that is our lesson for today about autogenics and biofeedback. I'm so thankful and grateful that you were able to join us. And if you have any questions, write them down on a piece of paper. Bring them to the adult or adults or elders in your home, in your community. Start a conversation. Maybe there's something that wasn't quite clear, or maybe there's something that came into your mind and now you're curious about. So bring those curiosities and those questions your family, it could be your, the family you live with, or it could be your school family or your community, and start a conversation. It was so good to be with you today, everyone. Again, I'm Lilita, and I can't wait to see you next time. Have fun at camp, and good luck with all of your other mind-body practices. See you next time. Bye.